and um, and I dropped the phone, the microphone. So here we go. Can you guys hear me in the back? Yes. Is this volume enough, or do I need to raise it? Good. good. You guys good? Okay. Awesome. Um, I'm Dr. Nancy DeAndretti. I have a degree and uh, a PhD in clinical psychology, which I don't use very much. <laughs> what I use most is my intuition and uh, guidance. Um, today we're going to talk about cutting cords, but before we start, I'd like to make this space as safe as possible um, by maybe doing a quick meditation grounding. Thank you. So the process can go smoothly and we're all in the same, in the same page. Thank you for closing the door. All right. So make sure that your feet are on the ground, both feet and sit as comfortable as possible so you don't have to move too much. Stand as comfortable as possible. <laughs> With your spine straight, take a deep breath in and let it go with a sigh. <sighs> you can close your eyes if you wish or you can just look down if that feels more comfortable. So take another deep breath in and let it out. And one more, releasing everything. Deep breath in. So releasing all expectations. And visualize a light coming from your heart, going down into the earth through your spine. down into the earth like roots of a tree grounding you helping you feel connected solid letting you know that you are safe letting you know that you are grounded that your energy will be grounded. And when you feel grounded, shoot that light up the top of your head, your crown chakra, and connect it all the way up to the heavens. Almost there. And feel that light nurturing you from both sides, from the earth and from the heavens, grounding you solidly. There we go. And once you feel connected on both sides, just visualize this expansion sideways as if it was an explosion happening where your light just expands wide, really wide, and it touches every person around you. And it expands to the size of this room, sealing this space for the work that we're gonna do today. all the way to the back. Every corner. There you go. Beautiful. Hmm. So bring your awareness to this moment. Open your eyes if you wish. Hmm. 
I'm going to record this tonight in case you fall asleep. You can watch it later. <laughs> um, <laughs> so today we're going to talk about energetic cords. Who knows what that is? Okay, tell me something, what you know. Energetic cords are attachments that you get on an energetic level when you are intimate and, and involved with other people. They tend to be negative because you get energy going back and forth and many people don't know to cut them because you can still be corded to people from many, many years ago and has a detrimental effect on your physical and emotional well -being. Any other descriptions? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's a microphone. Come on up here. <laughs> All right, my class is done. Thank you very much. I'm done. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So let's say that I go to a bar and I have a one night stand. I would never do that, I swear. <laughs> Um, that is going to be a cord that I'm attaching to that person. Let's say that the next day I go to work and my boss, I just want to strangle her. That's another cord that I attach. And let's say that I'm in a romantic relationship. That's another cord that I have attached. And I have one with my mom and I have one with my daughter and I have tons of cords going around. What happens is some of these cords are really cool to have, but some other cords I really want to get rid of. But I'm walking around just dragging all these cords like this one, dragging all these cords, not knowing why I'm getting stuck, not knowing why uh, I'm not moving forward with certain things. Of course, there's a million of things that you can think of, but cutting cords is a really good thing to do energetically. So when you, ha you are in a relationship, what you want to do is not necessarily cut all of the cords. You just want to identify the cords that are toxic. It's kind of like you're trimming a tree and you're just kind of cutting the branches that are dead. That's what you want to do. You don't want to chop the entire tree. You want to cut the dead branches. And so what we're going to do today is that I'm going to guide you through it completely so you can do it each of you right now. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have by any chance something to write on or like, if not, that's okay. Um, So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to identify where the cords are. A, an explanation of every step is actually on my website. I'm going to actually post this video there. Um, so you guys can go over it too. Let's start by setting the intention. Every connection that you've had is what? Is it hindrance? Is it lessons? What is it? Every person that you've met, is it a mistake? Is it? Lessons. Yes, yes. So if we're going to go and cut the cords and say like, ew, I don't want you anymore, we're missing the information, we're missing the lesson of it. And so the intention that we want to set today when we're cutting these cords is to actually learn the lesson of that experience and to let go lovingly, lovingly, not with like, oh, I can't get rid of this person. No, it's like, what did I learn? What did, I, what did you bring me? Because we called them, we brought them in. This is our experience and we brought them in, so we need to learn from that as well. So let's set the intention right now that this process that we're going to do today is coming from pure love, pure understanding, from divine guidance. So whatever happens today is exactly what needed to happen. 
Even if it means that your cords are not completely cut because you need more information, let's be guided by, by that. All right. So the first thing I want you to do is to think of someone that you want to cut cords with. And let me know if somebody needs more time. You guys are good. You're quick. <laughs> you can prepare, I think. <laughs> All right. So I want you to scan your body from the top of your head all the way down to the floor and notice, but for this you have to go inside. Notice the spaces in you where you feel a little pressure or a little tingling or discomfort or just a vision. <laughs> I hope that wasn't in the recording. <laughs> the special sounds. The special sounds, too. I'm editing that part. <laughs> Flushing away the cords, though. <laughs> We're going to wait for him and then look at him. <laughs> Make him feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's proceed with scanning the body scan from the top of your head and what I'd like you to do is if you have somewhere to write down write down every single place where you feel a sensation that you didn't feel before it could be a little itch on the top of your head It could be something like something feeling right here on the throat. It could be sort of like a strap around you. It could be on your heart too. Just notice all of the spaces, all the places could be your lower back. And I'm mentioning all these places that I'm feeling people having around. Could be in your arms too. Even your teeth. So scan, scan, scan. You can have one or you can have a hundred. Don't judge it. That's just the amount of communication that you've built with this person. These cords are what enables us to feel the other person when the other person is in trouble, to feel the other person when they're about to call. These are the <coughs> cords that let us communicate. And it's also the cords where we send this nasty energy too when we, uh, we don't like them. Hmm. So notice all of the cords. Mm. So the next step is we're going to go cord by cord. Were you going to give us a minute to, to do the scan here? Or we... Oh, I, I assume you did already. I'm so oh, sorry. Would it be okay to give you some time to scan? Would you like that? <coughs> On a certain person? Yeah. I was listening to you rather than scanning, but maybe I was the only one. That's fine. We can go on. Um, I'm actually doing it as, as I go. So if you want to do it now with me while I'm doing it, that's, that's good. Um, I can give you a little extra time. But if you want to just listen, please be patient because <laughs> I'm going to go a little slow. Okay, so scan, 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 scan feel. And we might not do all of the chords today, but at least do a feel. 
So if you, if you don't mind me, I'm going to feel around and maybe suggest some things. Um. Marie, Miss Marie, around your throat here. Your chest, right there. Mm, your stomach. Um, I don't know, your name, <clears throat> her chest, the roof of your mouth, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm feeling somebody and I'm trying to figure out who that is. Right here. It extends here. I thank you, sir. Glasses. Oh, you with it? Okay. I'm just sensing in my body the cords that might be attached to you. I'm feeling somebody's back. Uh -huh. This one is pretty strong. I'm feeling this one connected to this. So whoever it is, it's like, yeah, pretty strong. Ladies, straight up standing legs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, dark hair. Right in front of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He legs. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> so the way I'm perceiving it, you can too. This is not magic. This is not something that I'm doing that you cannot do. All of you are able to do this. So this way... We're going to start noticing. So let's say that there is one right here in the stomach. Ugh. Somebody has it in the stomach. Pretty bad, too. I want you to notice what is it made of. Is it made of a tree trunk? Is it made of cable? Is it made of um, rope? So notice that. Ooh. I thought it was the California burrito. <laughs> California what? Burrito. Yeah. Well, I ate a lot of California. <laughs> <laughs> the California burrito, she said. <laughs> <laughs> so notice what it's made of. And what we're going to do right now is we're just going to go with one of the cords. But you're going to do with every single cord, you're going to do this procedure. So with the first cord, let's say that this cord is made of um, twine, like entangle roots, like that. So pick a tool that will help you cut this. So this could be an axe, if that does the job, or a laser, or a diamond sword, whatever <coughs> you decide is the best thing to cut this. And so proceed to cut it. And I want you to take your time. It has to be all the way. Don't start chopping it and leaving it halfway. Cut it completely. Sometimes it's really easy, but sometimes the ties are so strong and there's this emotional pull that comes up that says, I don't wanna let that person go. And so it takes a little while to cut, but that's information. All of that is information. Hmm. So proceed to cut that completely. 
and as you're cutting it, that root, where it's coming from, it has to dissolve. So visualize it dissolving, not only on your side, but on that other person's side as well. Let it dissolve on that side as well as yours. It's either turning into nothing or absorbing whatever it is that you feel is the right thing to do. But don't leave it dangling. Mm, that's good. Nice. Good. Very good. A little bit more. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. A little bit more. So visualize that last bit, sort of like a wound that is sealing, a wound that is healing completely. Beautiful. Good, very good. So this last step, we're going to visualize a violet light surrounding us completely and sort of showering us with this light to help seal and heal and also to protect us from reattaching again. There we go. Mm, good. So this practice is the basics of cutting cords. There's a lot more details on, because every person is different and there's a lesson with each person, but this is pretty much the basics. You guys got the basics down. Does that make sense? Good. Um, I'm going to actually open up for questions. That way, if I miss something, you guys can ask me. Okay, I just recently learned about energetic cores. I hadn't really consciously experienced it. And then I had a client that I was working with, and then I could just see so many cords leading, you know, attachment to the mother and their family and, and everything. And she was like completely out of control. She didn't, she wasn't in control of her whole being. And um, so step by step, I should probably draw attention to each cord. So what I do in my sessions yeah. is I have them do the introduction part where we set the intention and all of that. And so I ask them to identify each core. So as they're having their eyes closed and they're saying, yeah, I feel something in my eye, I'm writing it down for them. Mm -hmm. And so until they feel like completely done. And then I go one by one, I'm like, okay, in your eye, what is that made out of? Oh, I feel like there's a core. Okay, what tool would you like to use? I wanna use scissors. Okay, let's do scissors. And I'm supporting the experience completely, um, sort of making it safe for that person to go there. So I wait until, until they're done because sometimes they're like, I can't cut it. I can't, it's, it's not working. And I said, okay, let's see what information is there. I just can't let that person go or that person has a hold on me, or I owe money to that person, or you know we have children together, or something like that, that we need to process about that. So then, after we process that, we go through the list, and we scan the body again until that's completely done. What I've seen in people is incredible. Uh, past relationships, or relationships with mom and son, I had a, a a client who had trouble with mom, loved her to death, but had trouble after trouble after trouble. Mom was very possessive and, 
And so he did this exercise and he came to see me again. He was like, my mom changed. And I'm like, no, she didn't, you did, you know. It was the interaction that changed, the feeding of that energy. And many boyfriend, ex-boyfriends too, uh, that kind of situation. Tyson, you had a question? Yes. Correct. Correct. Yes. Correct. That's resistance. Did you have a question? Mm -hmm. uh, I was going through the process. I had a hard time kind of feeling the material of that cord. Can you repeat the question? Sure. Just any tip on trying to visualize what, you know, what is it made of? And did you get it? Were you able to? No. Okay. So he was asking, he was trying to visualize the material of the cord, and he wasn't able to get that. Now, we are doing a, a really quick demonstration of this. Uh, in like five minutes, we're trying to do this. Let's say that I am taking my time, and you still cannot figure out that is. That, to me, is a sign also that perhaps you don't want to go there. Perhaps you don't want to cut that core for some reason. Or you're not very good at imagining. <laughs> so because there is people that can't imagine as, as good, so what I would do is go with a feeling. Does it feel cold? Does it feel hard? You know, go with that sensation. Or do sort of like, what's the first word that comes into your mind? That kind of thing. That's what I would do. Did that answer your question? Okay. Did, did I answer your question? Yes, yes. Okay. Sorry. If trimming a cord and you accidentally cut one that you kind of needed to have, it, it can grow back or whatever, right? So you don't need to worry too much about it. When we set the intention to cut the cords, the question was, if you're trimming a cord and, whoops, you cut one that you didn't mean to cut, when we're setting the intention to cut those cords, we're setting the intention to cut the cords that are no longer in service. So all of the ones that are not in service are gonna pop out. They're gonna come and say, hey, me, me, me next. The ones that are in service, the ones that you don't need to cut, they're not gonna show up in your consciousness. So there's no way that you could possibly cut any uh, good ones. But let's say that you say, hey, show me all of the cords and like, whoops, I cut this one, I didn't mean to. They grow back. Just imagine my relationship with my daughter and I cut one, we're not communicating, I'll work right on it. I'll get back into it and, and work on building that relationship again or that connection. Is there more than one attachment to you? Like you said, sometimes the negativity could go through the, the cord as well as the positive. Mm. Do you have like, two or can you get rid of the negative and keep the positive or how does that so i had a client who had a helmet with a hundred cords coming out and those were thoughts that were connected to that person so the funny thing about energy is that there's no really difference between where one starts or the other one ends because that's a function of the brain. The brain is the one that says, oh, by the time I'm gonna touch this, it's gonna be 0 0.05 seconds. The brain says, this is the distance between my finger and the wall. And when we meditate, we actually shut that system off and we feel connected to all. It's when we finally said, okay, there's no really a difference between me and the wall between you and I. So when we're cutting the cords of energy, what we're doing is visualizing with our mind, with our limited mind, we're visualizing and compacting the energetic, the negative energetic cords around. So the rest is uninterrupted. Does that make sense? I'm sorry, let me, I'll go back oh, to you. Um, could you, I know it could be complicated, but if you go into the information gathering process on so finding who's attached on the other end, how did you get the cord in the first place, and the dynamics of it, what, mm -hmm. what would you do to explore that for a person or for a client? 
Mm -hmm. Good question. So the, the question is, can I go over like, who's the person that I attach to? What's the purpose of the courts and all of that? Uh, most of the time, it doesn't matter. Most of the time, it doesn't matter why you attach, how many people you're attached to, because what you're working on is on you. It's on yourself. But let's say that right now you thought of someone specifically, an ex person, and you're saying, okay, I really want to cut this relationship off because we broke up like 10 years ago. I'm still attached. It's for some reason, I still feel bad for that person. What, when you are cutting the cords, you already know that just by being in a relationship with that person, you are attached. Just by being in that relationship. Now, let's say that you have one that is huge, that is really big, that you're having a hard time cutting, that's when you go into, okay, this is a lesson right here for me. So for example, a lot of healers like you guys have cords connected to society and to belief systems. And these cords sometimes say, don't make enough money, don't charge too much. Um, charging too much will just make you materialistic and not spiritual enough and blah, 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 blah. So there's a system that we connect to sometimes that we need to cut. This is a collective consciousness um, type of work. And so when you were, when you decided to become a healer, you sort of tapped into that collective consciousness, unfortunately, and you hooked on that. And so part of this is saying like, okay, well, I don't wanna be a part of that anymore. I wanna cut these cords now. And so you proceed to cut them without needing to know specifically all of the details. If you wanna know more, that's, that's good. Um, but you don't have to necessarily. Did that answer your question? Um, yeah. yeah. So I had somebody else. Mm -hmm. Well, I was wondering, um, I've heard about going ahead if you have a situation where maybe you, your wife or something, I mean, or your mate, and you have good and bad going on, I mean, you know, negatives and positives, and um, I've heard of severing it and then reestablishing it at a higher vibrational level. Mm -hmm. so Great I question. Mean, Great question. So the, the comment was, um, you have a relationship that has been operating for a while in a certain way and you cut the cords and you reestablish new cords based on a higher vibration and that's excellent excellent because the person that you guys were yesterday is not the same person that you are today you are way more evolved than you were five years ago but is your relationship the same or is it evolved as well so sometimes we need to do this kind of like cleaning the house and getting rid of stuff that kind of thing so the same with the courts. We need to upgrade our courts. We need to upgrade the relationship. So when we cut the courts that don't serve us, it leaves room for new ones, including jobs, including money, including relationships, everything, everywhere. You guys know this. So as a new person that I am today with this knowledge and this awareness, what I do is I connect differently now and I build new courts with this, with this person based on who I am now. Does that make sense? And you can consciously connect courts instead of just randomly letting them connect to you? Like so for example, there is, uh, the question was, can you randomly connect courts? Or it's usually intentional. We're not going around saying like, I'm gonna connect with you, yay. <laughs> um, <laughs> we actually do it at an emotional level. So the example of, I'm gonna go and have a one night stand, I'm connecting at a sexual level. And my fluids and the other person's fluids are exchanged. And so there is an intimacy, there is a connection there that I just put in my bag. One more here, one more to put there. So it's really good to do this cleansing once in a while, you know, to just uh, disconnect. There are many ways of disconnecting, but this is a good one. Um, so you connect through emotions, you connect through intimacy, 
you connect because you have a job that you have to go to every day and there's respect. But for example, you might meet each other tonight and there's no cords connected at all. You might say, hi, how are you? And they give me your card and da, 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 that's great. I love you, you're great. And that might be nothing. But you know when you built a cord, you know it. There is something that you know that said, wow, that person is pretty cool. I want to keep connected to that person. I want to stay in touch with that person. You built a little cord. Doesn't mean that you have to go every day, go home and like, okay, I got to clean up everything that I did today. Because most of the cords are really innocent, that they're part of feeding. This is part of the interaction. This is what connects us all. I'm talking about the cords that said like, why can't I leave this job? Why can I leave this relationship? What's going on? I know it's toxic. What's going on? Or why can't I stop thinking about that person that, that doesn't let you move, that it keeps you like uh, stuck? Make sense? Any other? When you have a cord connected to someone, but they don't know it or they don't feel when they don't feel a cord to you, can you affect them with your energy or can they vice versa? Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. So say you have a cord and you're connected, like you say, the one I stand and say, the female can't stop and the guy's moved on. Can you affect that energy, affect that person kind of? Is so the question is, can you affect the other person's energy, the one that you're connected to? So the example that I gave earlier, this, this young man was having issues with mom. And when he cut the cords, mom started behaving differently towards him. She had no idea why. But it's not so much that he went and affected her directly, is your exchange of energy brings out a reaction. <coughs> if I start yelling at you, your reaction is gonna be like, whoa. If I start laughing, <laughs> it's gonna be a different reaction. My daughter gets creeped out when I do that. <laughs> so it's actually, when we are working on our energy, what we're doing is we are affecting everybody around us because everybody around us is a reflection of us. And so my work is going to affect the other person not that they're going to be conscious about it, but they're going to react differently to me. Even if you don't see them or know, I mean, if you don't even say you don't see them. Correct. I've had um, clients that I've worked with who had an ex-boyfriend from a long time ago, actually many ex-boyfriends, mm -hmm. and they've done this cleansing. And guess who called me this evening? <laughs> guess who sent me a message on Facebook? That's so weird, like that. So there is, they feel the connection. They feel like the dogs that feel like their owners are gonna come home, mm -hmm. the same. So usually it's a very positive reaction. Sometimes it's like, why did you disconnect from me? They don't know it, but they're feeling like, you're escaping my grip, what's going on? Does that make sense? Did that answer your question? And you had a question? facilitating that do you where do you go from there once you disconnect from a certain belief system give me an example like would you want to download or attach to um, a, more, a healthier belief system or thought to hold on to rather than I hate money or money <laughs> is evil type of thing great question great question did everybody hear the question do I need to repeat it? No? Okay. Um, thoughts are energy. Yes? Yes, absolutely. And the cords are energetic cords. So we attach to this cloud. And when, we, when our entire attention is towards the cloud, we don't see anything else. Now, if I were to tell you, disconnect to this so I, you can see this, I'm still focusing on that. So when we disconnect the cords, everything else comes into the vision. There's nothing to search. Because just the fact of searching for something is saying, 
I don't want that. I want something else, but I don't want that. I want something else. I don't want that. Or I'm escaping from that. I want to move away from that. So once that um, the disconnection from the belief systems or the thoughts is done, things just pop in front of you just by magic. Things lap, land on your lap. It's like, whoa, I never saw that coming. The, the issue that I see with attaching to new ones is our limited mind is going to decide based on everything that we know, which is oop, this much. So when we don't attach to anything particularly, we allow for guidance to show us things that were unexpected, things that we didn't even think it was possible. Did that answer your question? Any other questions, thoughts? Um, if you're in tune to feeling the chords around you, how do you, how do you differentiate between your own and, like people around you? Like, how do you know that you're not feeling someone else's cord on your body? Mm, good question. So the question was, how do you know that what you what I was perceiving was not my cord and was you know was yours? Um, it takes practice. In my practice, what I do is I try to get out of the way. I try to say, okay, I don't know anything. I really don't know anything. Go for it. Guide me. Now, I work on myself all the time. All the time. I'm constantly in tune. I'm constantly in tune with what bothers me in terms of food, what bothers me in terms of energy, what bothers me in terms of friendships or everything. I'm in tune all the time. And so I'm doing self-care constantly, constant self-care and constant uh, soothing of myself because I want to know me and I want to know the difference between is this me or is this somebody. Now, when I'm in session, I scan myself before the session, and this is something I do just so automatically. I scan myself and I notice in me what's going on. And I'm like, okay, take a mental note of that. And then when I'm tuning into someone, my mind is setting an intention and is saying like, okay, feel, show me. Those are the words that I say in my mind, show me. And then immediately I feel this woo in my heart or I feel sensations that I didn't have before. So I know that that's not mine. But let's say that I try to work on it and whatever and still feel it. Then I ask myself, is this mine? Do I also need to work on this? Because it might be, it might be a collective thing. It might be something that we all have to work on. It might be something that the person is reflecting for me. So I'm not afraid of that necessarily. But I also check with me with that. Does that make sense? If, say, you did get a stomach or a heart or something and you cleared it from your body, are you therefore helping clear it from theirs? Um, every symptom is information. So if I clear somebody else's symptom, I'm not helping them because they were the ones that attached to it. And they were the ones that called it and said, I need to be taught something, please show me. And sometimes when we don't hear enough, then the body says, all right, I'm gonna show you louder. Yep. And it comes into forms of symptoms. So if the person wants my support, it will be in the sense of Let's understand why you picked this up in the first place. Let's understand what is it that we need to learn from this information. What is this trying to tell you? And then I said, let's, let's clear it and I'll support you 100%. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you may feel it as a diagnostic thing and then somehow you're able to disconnect from it. Rather than having to clear it yourself, you just disconnect, give it back to them. What's what interesting is when I do a session, um, my first session I usually do a, a scan of the person and I'm like okay let me see oh I feel something in the throat okay I write it down as soon as I write it down it goes away the feeling goes away because I acknowledged it 
That's my intuition saying like, no, pay attention, pay attention right there. When I don't acknowledge it, stays. It's like, Argh! right there until I acknowledge it. As soon as I acknowledge it, it's gone. So that's how um, I let it go. By bringing awareness to the other person. The other person might not be aware that they're feeling that. So I'm being the person that becomes aware of it and shows it. Does that make sense? Any other questions? I'm sorry, say the question again. Does the, does the placement of where you feel the pain, does that represent something? Like, for instance, I feel it in my lower back. Should I think that represents something special or something different that I should be aware of? The information is presented in a way that you will understand. So if you are very familiar with acupuncture and uh, all the holistic, it's going to show you in a way that is in your frame of mind. If you are a uh, personal trainer, it's going to show you in terms that you're going to learn in the muscles or, or whatever. So the interpretation of where the pain is located is actually individual. Usually is connected to something that we do with the other person. Usually is um, maybe, you know, lower back might be related to money. Uh, might be related to load, care in the load, that kind of thing. So in individual sessions, you sort of ask the person, what does it feel like to have that? Well, it just feels like I'm bending down, like I'm carrying all this stuff. For another person, it might mean like just a pain in the butt, you know, something <laughs> like that. Did, I, did that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. I forgot my question. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening so come carefully back. to what you said. Mm, it'll come oh, back. No, I remember it now. Um, and I, I, I think I've asked you this privately, but I'm, I'm just more interested. Um, did you early on, did you have an awareness of chords or energetic patterns and whatnot? And then did it become stronger as you become a therapist and started working with it? Or how did you develop this area? Because I, I would love to be able to go in that direction. Mm -hmm. So he was asking if this is something that I just, uh, you know, I, I've always had, or did I pick it up? Or develop. Or develop. You had it, you developed. So all of you are capable of feeling what I'm feeling, and are capable of doing what I'm doing, and even more. Each one of you is capable of doing that. But it's a choice to develop it. When I was little, my dad used to take us to the mountains and um, it was like deep into the forest in Venezuela where I grew up. And we used to listen to the angels talk. And you know, I'm a little kid. I'm like, oh, look at this butterfly. Ah. You know, I didn't care that there were like angels speaking with this loud voice. And for me, it's like, everybody hears it. Ah, who cares, whatever. And so as a teenager, I was like, Dad, really? Do I have to go to the stupid mountain? I don't want to go there. No, thank you very much. So I stayed home and all of that. But I was maybe um, about 18 or 19, something like that. And I started getting connected. Somehow it just came to me, people that did healing with hands, people that did chakra clearing, like 20 years ago, whatever amount was. I won't tell you how many. Um, and I learned every single technique, but I didn't really use it for others. I used it for myself. I had healings with hands. I had psychic surgery done on me. Um, I've had validation after validation after validation that this was a really real thing. But I really never used it. I went for my PhD in clinical psychology because my brain was telling me, go there. And also, I had my dad's voice saying, like, uh, school, A plus, is that what we're doing? You know, that. So I, I had this focus. But every single time that I was going to divert into the more clinical and less spiritual, it was like, this way. 
mm, this way. I'm like, why am I not being accepted in this university? Why am I not getting this job? It was like, guidance was like, nope, we're not going to let you. You know, my soul was guiding me 100% of the time, but I was fighting it 100% of the time. So it wasn't until maybe, I would say, maybe 10 years ago that I started exploring little by little in my, you know, in the clinic that I, wor I was working with the severely mentally ill. I was like, I wonder if they tap like this, maybe it'll work. I wonder if they'll freak out if I do muscle tests. Mm. And I worked with a lot of the Latino population um, who loved this kind of thing because they are very into shamanism, into nature, all of that. So it sort of gave me room to explore and I started trusting more. That's the key right there, trusting. Because I have thoughts that come into my mind and I was like, no, that's not, that's nothing. No, that's not, no. I have feelings coming, everything. And I was like, nope. Not listening to that. But I have validation after validation after validation that said trust, 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 trust. So it is partly developed and it's partly innate in all of us. I choose to develop it and I would encourage you to, to develop it as well. Any other questions? I don't know how we're doing with time. 10 minutes. I know we drifted away from cutting the cords, but I think it's all fascinating. Did you have a question? No. Are we just are we going to cut a, another cord? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, what I'll encourage you to do is tonight uh, complete all the cutting of the cords when you get home, because it will be a little uh, a little less distracting. Um, I'm gonna post this video on my website as well and instructions on how to do it kind of like the basics um, of everything what are you doing right now? I'm feeling somebody like really strongly <laughs> so I'm putting my hand on my chest to soothe myself because it's not the right time to tell the person uh, but I, I can't help it to feel it because I open myself up my fault um, so I'm just soothing myself so my daughter is, is telling me it's encouraging me to share this story of this client that I have um, this lady came and she scheduled me and she was referred by someone I never met her before so while she was waiting I kind of scan or, or tune into her energy and I try to pick up whatever information was coming so the first thing that I felt was like somebody put a blindfold in front of me and I'm like, oh, that's weird. I write it down, you know, blindfold, I don't know, maybe something she doesn't want to see, I don't know, whatever. And then I get this intense headache, ow, right here on this side of the head. I write it down, goes away. Then I see this uh, vision of uh, trees and like Julian or something like that, foresty. I write it down, goes away. Um, I can't remember, a, 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 a few other things. So when I bring her in, I tell her like, hey, I wanted to share with you these things. Because what happens is the energy is telling me all the information that the ego doesn't want me to know. The ego is going to tell me like, listen, I came here because my ex-boyfriend was la 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 la. When the soul is saying like, please help me with this other stuff, please. So when I mentioned this to her, she was like, oh, I actually was coming to talk to you about my current boyfriend, but since you brought that up, I, um, I was engaged before, and my fiancé shot himself in the head in Julian, and I can't sleep unless I have his t-shirt over my eyes. Oh. Wow. So, this is not something I only can do. Each one of you, if I can look at each one of you, you all can do. But you gotta trust. You have to trust. And the beautiful thing is that you have this community that can actually give you feedback. 
and say like, oh yeah, how'd you know that? So, I mean, it, it's not easy. I, I, it took me a while to trust, but yeah, good. So um, I work at an eating disorder clinic in Orange County on Fridays. Uh, I, I run the spiritual program there because I think it's important to uh, work with the mind, the body and the spirit. And that's kind of like the final to reconnect them back into their spirituality. They lose a lot of that. And I also uh, see clients in La Jolla. Occasionally I see clients here when Marla lets me use her office. Um, I have um, I brought a, an office in La Jolla. Well, you always do. I you always let you. Nah. <laughs> um, and then I left my cards on top of the wooden heart as well at, um, with my website address if you want to look a little bit more. I'm constantly put in videos and things like that to educate people to sort of like spread this word for everybody. Um, and I'm gonna start our new projects too. So I'd love for you guys to reach out to me so I can let you know what's coming up next and all of that. Yep. I have a question. Sometimes when you get into a pit and it's something that just comes out of your mouth and you're talking to a stranger or somebody <laughs> and they kind of get freaked out. I mean, is it, that's okay that, if, is that because their guides are telling they need to hear what you're going to say? Because mm -hmm. I've had people like, like, <laughs> like what you're saying, how do, how do you know that? So her question is like, can I go up to a stranger and tell them what I'm perceiving? Because they get freaked out, you know. Um, ask yourself, what's the intention? What's the purpose? If the intention is, listen, guidance is telling me to tell you that you need to go talk to your wife right now. If they freak out, they're going to be like, whoa, okay, lady, sure, whatever. But they're going to think about it. They're, you put the little seed. If the intention is to rescue them, don't do it. Don't do it. And that happens to me when I get messages from people. From my personal belief, it's not, I don't want to interfere. I don't want to go against um, their process. Their laws and their process. So if I get a message, I will say to someone, I've received a message for, would you like to hear it? And then it's their choice. I've done my job, I, and if they say no, that's, then I have done what I needed to do. And if they say yes, then I will share it with them. But that way I'm not interfering in any way, but I'm still doing my job as being a messenger. Yeah. So when I go places, n like here I'm making an exception, but when I go places, I don't go around feeling everybody because it will be depleting. It will be just yeah. terrible. Um, so I don't even get messages. I don't even, I don't, I don't care. You know, I'm at a party and I'm, having fun, enjoying myself, I'm not going to connect with anybody unless there is a higher purpose. If there is a higher purpose, then yes, but otherwise, no. And this is for your own protection, for your own um, conservation of energy, <laughs> I would say. Any other thoughts, comments, questions before we adjourn? Yes. <coughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the next couple of times was 75. That's a little now, that man was in a situation in his brain where he just did it, and the people, the, you know, the people he attracted believed they should pay it. Always set your intention, and the clients will come. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you for sharing that. Did you have a question? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what about, can you get cords coming over from past lives? Oh, oh. good question. <laughs> you know the answer to that. I do? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I think you could, but uh, I'm not, I really don't know if that's coming from uh, you bringing it over yourself or your mother connecting that with you or, you know, just a lot of, a lot of questions in there, you know, of how that happens. And, and uh, and whether it does really happen, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm feeling it does, you know. But what does your gut tell you? 
I'm feeling like it, it, it does happen, but uh, I don't think it should, you know. I think it should be wiped clean when you start again, you know, but I don't think it is. Um, this is my, of course, this is my own opinion. We choose to reattach. You when we go, yes. When we go going over there and like, oh, what is it? What happened in my past life? Like, don't you have enough in this one? You know, <laughs> when you go there, you choose to reattach again and re enliven that, you know, bring it back. And you're right. It shouldn't. You're starting brand new. That's why your memory is wiped and you're like not remembering everything. I'm not saying that we don't have things from the past lives that still affect us wounds or things like that that we couldn't clear but i think those cords is something we intentionally attach to other people for some kind of relationship or energy exchange that we need um, and last question yeah are ever used for psychic attack either by people or by spirits or anything like that um so his question is, can cords be used for psychic attacks and spirituality and all of that? Um, the cords that we attach to people are very different than the energy of supernatural. And this is some other topic that I know we're not gonna be able to talk about too much tonight, but um, supernatural doesn't need to attach to us through cords. <laughs> and I kept it short on purpose. <laughs> yeah, so the man with the... With the yeah. All right, so I want to end with the, uh, with the rain. You guys did it the last time? the rain. Yeah, so this, let's set the intention that when we do this exercise for, the, exercise for the rain, we're calling the rain gods to rain some water in California. So, <laughs> so what we're going to do um, for the ones that haven't practiced the rain, the first two rows, no, actually the first row is gonna go like this when I point at you. The second two rows are gonna go softly like this. Yeah. The next two rows are gonna go on your lap. Yeah, like tap on your lap. And then the next two rows are gonna go on the floor as loud as you can or like make sounds. And the ones on the back are going to be the lightning. Brrrm, sounds like that. Yeah? I count on you guys. Make it, make it rain. It's up to you. Make it rain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pointing. And as I'm pointing and looking at you, you're going to start. We're going to feel the rain for a little bit. And then when I point at you again, we're going to stop the rain until we get to the front. Yeah? Good instructions? Cool. Are you ready? Oh, it's starting to rain. I'm getting cold. Ah, oh. where's my umbrella? Oh, it's really harder. Ooh. <laughs> clap, 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 two, clap, clap loud, clap, loud, vroom, vroom, make it rain, feel that, close your eyes for a moment and feel that rain. You guys are going too fast. Ah, yay! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Great job, great team, thank you. Thank you, love. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you.